Oh dear. Lando's really stuck between a rock and a hard place, isn't he? He can't seem to make the internet happy. But he has made a certain American very happy. The long and the short of it is, is that Lando Norris has now extended his time with McLaren with a multi-year contract. Yet another example of what we were talking about with Charles Leclerc the other day, in that his contract has been extended for several more seasons. The idea of putting an exact date on a contract length is now becoming passé. We are starting to see a trend that new contract signings are starting to become less interested in putting an exact date and an exact length on how long they're going to run for, and instead trying to make a point to other teams who are courting certain drivers that, hey, what does it matter to you how long the length of this contract is? I bet you thought I was going to say the length of their penis. Okay, thought the internet. Lando Norris is going to stick around with McLaren for the foreseeable future. We could probably expect the same thing happening with Oscar Piastri this time next year. And proving my point that Zach Brown sleeps with contracts by his bedside. But then this clip surfaced from Sky Sports, and it's been watched over 4 million times, where Lando goes, if you want to go against the best driver in the world, it's not the best thing to do answering whether or not going to Red Bull to partner up with Max Verstappen would be a smart move or not. Now that's where things got crazy. Some people in the comments interpreting this as Lando running away scared that he couldn't handle being a teammate of Max Verstappen and that he would rather stay in the bosom of Zac Brown. It then brought back memories of Austin in Brazil where they were fighting for position and Lando came out short. And then Silverstone where Lando got the lead from Max Verstappen and then in theory waved Max by after lap four. The news of Lando staying at the Aaron should really have not been surprising, but what this descended into was a complete attack on Lando's character. The internet and body slams him with the idea that he's a wuss. And how's that going to make him feel, huh? And I know that you're talking about F1 drivers and feelings and that they shouldn't be soft and worrying about their feelings. No, this is how Lando interprets things. He feels confident with this decision and he's the one driving the car. So it's up to him where he goes and where he stays. All this negativity is going to make Lando clam up and no longer be the guy that likes talking to people who expresses himself on the internet. He's going to withdraw within himself potentially because what's the point of speaking my mind because I'm going to be attacked about it no matter what I say. But what confused me is that this rhetoric was going against some of the stuff that he was sort of letting slide earlier on in 2023. There have been constant rumours of Lando Norris being purported to be going to Red Bull to partner up with Max Verstappen. And Lando didn't exactly shy away from this. He was quite coy about it. He sort of let it run, and then Red Bull let it run as well. And Helmut Marko then kept going, Oh, Lando Norris is one of the biggest talents on the grid. Oh, he would really suit Red Bull colours. And it grew and grew and grew and grew. It is a little bit on Lando that he didn't immediately slam it down and say, well, I'm contracted with McLaren until 2025. Until then, let's not talk about it, okay? Then you get people like Albon implying that Lando Norris has effectively got an open invitation and that Red Bull would welcome him in any time. And then you get comments of Lando talking about, oh, he'd be open up to the option of sizing himself up against Max Verstappen. Sometimes in articles, he'd be quite flattered and open to the idea. Sometimes he'd be a little bit coy, wanting to move on. But deep down, I don't think he would go to Red Bull and partner up with Max. I think he would love to partner up with Max Verstappen one day, somewhere else. But in F1, with Red Bull, nah. And this comes from one particular interview featured on Racing News 365. There, he discussed that he never had the chance to race against Max in the same category before F1. So we're sort of getting some more information about the details as to why he's fascinated with the idea of bunking up with Max. Lando would understandably be intrigued to see what it would be like to be with Max Verstappen. And Max is open to the idea of partnering up with Lando himself. Max saying quite a few times that if he were the manager of the Formula One team, he would have Lando on his team immediately. And he has immense respect for Lando as well. And Lando has immense respect for Max. Lando even joked about inviting Max Verstappen to Woking to partner him up at McLaren. So in a way, he was sort of talking about, yeah, I'd like to be teammates with Max, but you know, he's got to come over here, you know? And then you get the likes of Christian Horner talking about the idea of outsiders coming into Red Bull still being a possibility. He would welcome the idea. Like he welcomed Sergio Perez in at the end of 2020 because, well, Sergio Perez was available and Albon wasn't really cut in mustard. It was a good PR move because Sergio Perez was a hot flavor at that time. 
But the idea of Norris and Red Bull just kept on chugging. And then you got that idea from Liberty Media, the rumours, saying that ideally they wanted Red Bull to have a dream team of sorts, but Max Verstappen to be partnered up with either Charles Leclerc or Lando Norris, having those two names in the same team would be a fantastic thing to drum up hype in the sport. I've already made a video about why they shouldn't, but you can tell that everybody likes the idea of Lando and Max being together, but I don't think it should happen right now. But still, it's one of the biggest things on the internet in the world of Formula One, and Lando just kind of kept it running. And sort of trying to justify this by saying, as I mentioned before, that everybody talks to every team, they want to size up what's available and what the teams are doing. And considering their options in case a team just completely falls apart and then they want to escape to somewhere else, that's fair, that does happen. But I think the reason why this suddenly became a shocker was that this rhetoric was going against everything that he talked about. Suddenly he goes, nah, nah, if you want to be good, you really shouldn't do that. A small section of the internet, but a very vocal part of the internet, interpreted that as he was running away from a challenge. I don't see a problem with this though, Lando staying. In fact, it kind of makes me think that, yeah, he would like the idea of partnering up with Max Verstappen one day in the future, maybe at the tail end of their careers, but right now he doesn't see the point of moving to Red Bull to do it just yet because, you know, the dynamics of Red Bull don't make any sense for that to actually flourish. And also McLaren might be onto something and something that he particularly likes. He doesn't see it as a smart move now. And I think you watching get that. I ran a poll over on my Twitter, which you can follow for my really hot takes, and only a tenth of the people who voted thought he was scared, the vast majority believing it to be something more interesting, that McLaren might have something under the hood that Lando likes the sound of, whilst another decent faction believe it's Lando simply being loyal to McLaren, which I can also see. I think it's a combination of both. Lando clearly likes what he sees with the development of the MCL 38, the 2024 challenger, and also Lando wants to do the business with McLaren, the team that gave him his opportunity as part of the Young Driver Development Program in 2017, gave him his break in Formula 1 in 2019, and has stuck by him ever since. What Lando Norris wants to do is get the title with McLaren, bring glory back to Woking, the same motivation that Michael Schumacher had with Ferrari, the same went for Fernando Alonso, and the same went for Sebastian Vettel. They all wanted to do the business with a legacy team and assert themselves in that team's history for the long term. It's not going to be quite as impactful as Lewis Hamilton getting the deed done in his second season and causing a stir in his first rookie season, but it's still a part that Lando Norris was there in the bad times of McLaren and saw it through all the way to the good times. Sort of what we're getting with Alex Albon starting the time off with Williams in their darkest day and then seeing them through to better times. Until he gets it done, I don't see him going anywhere else, unless it becomes clear that McLaren simply can't get there and Lando is approaching his early 30s and he needs to make a desperate move. But that's not for like another eight, nine years or something. And McLaren seemed to be okay with Lando staying for the foreseeable future. Then marketing the pants off of Lando, calling McLaren his home. They're like a mum, not wanting their baby boy to leave the nest just yet. I don't mean this in a derogatory way. No, 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 no. What I mean is that McLaren are not pressuring Lando to do the business at all. They want him to be comfortable. They want him to be ready to do what he needs to do. And when the time is right and Lando feels like it's the right time to leave, they won't pressure him. What's also quite obvious is that Lando has seen enough to convince himself that McLaren have kicked on for 2024, that the marketing push as of late is justified. The MCL 38 isn't going to be like what we saw with the 36 or the 60, where you can expect the flyaway races of that season, the initial opener to particular seasons, to be utterly woeful. McLaren are one of the slowest, and that these two drivers have to make do with what they can, and suffer a lot of indignation and a lot, a lot of pain. Based on what we've seen in McLaren, I really don't see that. And I know you're gonna say, oh, you're a McLaren fan, of course you're gonna say that. But I really think that the 2024 season's going to be more like what we saw in 2020 with the MCL 35. Lando is gonna start off strong and he might get a podium in the first race, like he did in 2020, his first ever podium in Formula One. And when Lando starts off strong, he usually has a strong season to back it up. A strong established start could do wonders for Lando and Lando Prime could be a thing. And I know that you're going to say that Lando only got that podium because of Lewis Hamilton's five second penalty, but Lando still had to make up the gap, close it down in the last seconds of the race with Scenario 7. He did the business in his second season. 
that is still a lot of guts and determination to drive the heck out of that car. That is still something to be credited. If we had a situation like last year that McLaren hadn't made any meaningful progress or in fact had gone backwards, we wouldn't have heard a peep from Lando Norris or McLaren. We wouldn't have had anything to do with whatever it takes. It would have all been silent. McLaren hopefully thinking that we don't want any attention before we get to the car launch. Um, yeah, we're, we're, we're in trouble here. You wouldn't have heard anything to do with Lando's contract because it doesn't really need to be brought up just yet because we're only just starting 2024. 2025 is when Lando's contract ends. That's not for like another 18 months. But now it's being done right now. So it's clear that something good is happening at McLaren and that the hype is somewhat justifiable, that McLaren aren't going to just fall off a cliff. Whether or not they're going to be right on Red Bull's heels right now, that's up for debate still. But they're still going to start off, I think, fairly decently. They could find themselves in a position like they were at the tail end of 2009. They've managed to get over the demons at the beginning of the season, when Lewis Hamilton almost quit Formula 1, to the point where they were one of the fastest teams on the grid and they got so many wins. You'd almost have the sensation and optimism they had in 2010, when both Lewis and Jensen were championship contenders, for a good long portion of that season. We're gonna see that same hype again in 2024 when Lando and Oscar are right up there. Maybe not right at the top, 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 but certainly within the mix for best of the rest. What Lando has done makes sense. The team are right behind him and he is the de facto leader. Even though Oscar Piastri has proved to be a lot more than he had bargained for at the start of the year, when Lando probably felt quite invincible after sending Daniel Ricciardo off with his tail between his legs humbling the honey badger. What didn't help is that Lewis Hamilton made recent comments whether he would want to be teammates with Max Verstappen, and he said that he was 100% happy with the idea of being partners with him in equal machinery. Lewis really talking up the idea of Red Bull and that they had a really good team behind them and that they had done everything it took to become the best team on the grid, and that he would understand that any driver would love to drive for a team like that. But this is important here. This was going around the time when Christian Horner was stirring the pot that a representative from Hamilton's team had talked to Red Bull about a possible seed, and it was rumored to be his dad. Lewis stayed at Mercedes is because he liked the idea of bringing a team right back up to the fore, and that ultimately also Max Verstappen wouldn't want to be his teammate anyway. And that was something backed up by Max Verstappen as well, saying that ultimately the idea of them being in the same team in equal machinery wouldn't work because they would be constantly trying to beat each other up which is what happened in 2021 when they were driving for different teams. It would be even worse if in, in the same. And then, in a way, Red Bull wouldn't win any championships at all because they'd be taking each other off or limiting the potential of both of the drivers. What Max would prefer is that these drivers should stick to those teams and that the team should do their best to build a championship winning car and bring the fight to Red Bull where these drivers could drive at their full potential and therefore you could have a really big challenge. These following comments from Max really, really do resonate. So do pay attention to these. I think it's also good to have us in different teams. For me, the important thing is that our rivals make sure they're competitive enough to battle it out. Because otherwise, it doesn't matter who you put next to each other. There is only one car winning the championship again. And that's not what you want as a fan. Say what you will about Max Verstappen, but he is aware about the appetites of fans. If you had Lando in the same car and he beat Max Verstappen, it would still be a Red Bull winning the championship and people would then go, oh, Red Bull again? But if you had Lando beating Max Verstappen in a McLaren, then oh, the skies have opened and it's amazing. Even though that's what his boss doesn't want because after 2021, he doesn't want to go through that again, Christian. But the question remains, will we see Max and Lando in the same team one day? Well, yeah, I do think so. Just not right now, for the foreseeable future. Maybe we might see a dream team of Lando Norris, Max Verstappen, Fernando Alonso, endurance racing at Le Mans, the three of them together. Maybe in the future, we might see Lando and Max partnering themselves up as some kind of sim racing operation. Them merging Team Redline and Quadrant into something like a big super sim racing team. Because Max does rate him highly and does consider him his best friend on the grid. But when you ask Lando that same question, he gets a little bit snippy. He might have been joking, but the response is certainly something to consider. He told one journalist to never call Max's BFF again, going along the lines of that Max and he respect one another and are friends during the circus of F1, but are nothing more. I can see why Lando thinks that, because he doesn't want the idea of friendship coming into play here, because if they're duking it out and Lando doesn't win out, or if 
he doesn't make a big concerted effort to keep Max behind him, like Carlos did with Max Verstappen at Monza for 15 laps, some people might interpret that as, oh, he's going easy on Max because they're BFFs. They're not BFFs. They're not friends. They are not going to take it easy with one another and that they are going to fight. Friendships can sour, like we saw with Rosberg and Hamilton. It goes tragic. And that's not what Lando wants. He does not want friendship coming into play here. Whereas Max, he doesn't care. Yeah, he considers Lando as a best friend on the grid. Doesn't matter to Max. Max doesn't care what people think. But when it comes to the psychology of this exchange, it does make sense. Lando doesn't feel the time is right to partner up with Max. He certainly doesn't see a logical at Red Bull with a team geared around Max. And McLaren have got something he's quite fascinated with. It makes sense to stay. The trend in Formula One is heading toward what Red Bull and Max Verstappen are up to. One team gearing themselves around one driver and then optimizing that car for them. It's what's happening with Charles Leclerc at Ferrari, and it's exactly what's going to happen with Lando Norris at McLaren. And in a way, you could argue it's always been the case. As for the second driver, well, it's a crapshoot. If their style is similar to the lead driver, then great. If it's not, then they've got to adapt or they will die. Every single team is going to do this. They are going to pick one driver to back and build the car around them to get the best out of that package. And that is something that I think Pierre Gasly is hoping for at Alpine, that he can become their lead driver. Esteban Ocon might be fighting for his Formula One life, but he's also a Mercedes darling at the same time. If you want to find out more about that particular statement, go and watch this video next. It's intriguing stuff. Ooh, Lewis replacement.